What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today. Just rolled out of bed. And, uh, yeah, so got some friends over this weekend. We are playing uh, some Pokemon trading card game. And we are testing for the World Championships. One of the decks that we are working on is Rayquaza. So I'm kind of back and forth on the deck. I don't really know. Sometimes it seems really good. Sometimes it seems like it just uh, loses to some very obvious kind of things in a deck like this where you're attacking just with big GX Pokemon every single turn. You feel like you just uh, kind of have a very you know easy to read strategy. Your opponent just needs to knock out three of your GXs and that's game uh you do have some things you could do to kind of work around that a little bit you got your lot ass you can force a seventh prize with that but you do also just play like kind of an abhorrent like amount of items which can spell disaster for like trash lanch decks and things like that i actually have no idea how the greninja matchup is going to go so we are about to see this is news to me as well um uh, back and forth on acro bike too trying to figure out if acro bike is going to be the way uh we want a second ultra ball here that is really good and what i think that i want to do is that we are going to ultra ball probably twice yeah we're going to ultra ball for like a probably for a ray and for a lele so we're gonna do that we're gonna go get one two go get a ray and then ultra ball the fury belt as well i think i mean like i could get a rangaroo instead that's like a little bit of a, a high greed play i think i just go for the ray or i could get the latias that's that's pretty good but i think i just try to attack as quickly as possible so i think i'm getting ray and i think i'm getting lele and then i think i'm just gonna go in for like turn to attack here and then no looking back like that's kind of what we're thinking so i'm going to ultra ball and grab my other lele here because you don't want to mill it right so we're going to grab that and then we are actually going to go grab our sycamore first with the lele then we're going to mill with the ray and max elixir and see how we do so grab the sycamore and it's nice to not be playing against a trash lanch deck and a ray deck just loves to be able to stormy win here and not really worry about what we just discarded we don't really like to think about it we're just like all right that's fine we got a ray in the discard pile gonna have to find my other rescue stretcher which i just saw is in the deck we saw that on the little max elixir there so maybe we'll find it we've got two energy in play so far and still have not uh, yes, let's ditch the Orangaroo. That's fine. <clears throat> Two energy in play so far. Have not even attached for turns, so that's great. I think we acro bike again. Like, I can acro bike one more time. See what I got. I could Mysterious Treasure for a Pokemon first here. That probably makes sense. Let's see. Um, go maybe? No, I don't think keeping the Orangaroo was correct there. Yeah, let's uh, let's mysterious treasure, and I'm gonna get rid of Guzma. We have three Guzmas in my hand. We're gonna go get yes, the other Ray here. Uh, slap that down. Accelerate some more energy. Very good. And then we're gonna acro bike. See if maybe we can pull the Latias out of the deck or something. Now we're gonna keep the Guzma here instead, so that we're just like having as many Guzmas as we can. And at this point, yeah, we got three energy in play. I'll mill with this ray here and probably get a, yeah, we got a fourth energy in play. And that's pretty good. I mean, so turn two, we're looking at like Guzma <clears throat> to get this ray into the active. And we're doing 120 damage. And then we just kind of keep attacking from there. I'm not sure how this matchup goes. I think like we just need to get all of our energy in play as quickly. Oh, goodness. Okay, so like this is going to be a quick one. My opponent played a Cynthia and did not actually get anything else. So I think, uh, you know, obviously we need to find Floatstone. I might not find it off of this Cynthia, though. Do you play three? So there's our Floatstone, and that's going to be good game to my opponent. Let's roll another one, see if we can get a little bit more of uh, some resistance here against the Rayquaza deck and see if we can uh, <laughs> get anything other than that. Uh, rough stuff for my opponent. I think that the Greninja matchup, I actually haven't tested it yet. I don't. I haven't been testing Greninja too much for Worlds. It's not really in my rotation. <clears throat> But I think that Greninja kind of gets just outsped 
by the Rayquaza deck. Unlike Buzzwool, which needs to reset its Knuckle Impact every turn, Rayquaza, once it just gets that energy in play, is just kind of like rolling ahead at just like 180, 180, and can just like knock out Greninja Breaks, which I think could be very stressful for Greninja to deal with. So that's like my thought. I don't really know. I mean, there, obviously, that was very bad. I think also going second for Greninja seems really bad, just having them be a whole step behind. Also, this Rayquaza deck just mulligans a lot. I mean, we mulligan all the time here. It's just... It's just kind of an every game thing. You expect a mulligan once or twice. We just don't really play a whole lot of basics in this list. Now, I think I'm going second, right? So I think I'm going second, which means that I can Tempest. We do have an acro bike here, so we'll see if we hit anything off of that. And, you know, that's kind of that's kind of what we got. Looks like we are playing against a Garbodor deck, though, so this is very interesting. I think I saw Lightning in there as well, so this could be like a Coco Spread deck. I've seen some of that. And we get hit with the turn one end, so that's, uh, that's not bad. I actually would not have minded a turn one Tempest there. And, you know, if we could have gotten, like, Latias out, we actually didn't need to really play a whole lot of items. And, yep, this does look like a Coco Spread deck. I've seen this deck before. I've lost to this deck before. I think we just need to be conservative with our items. And, you know, we need to knock out Cocos very fast. We need to not have a lot of Rayquazas in play. I think it needs to be like two max. So I think here I'm going to start with, I mean, like Fury Belt's good. If they play Field Blower, though, let's see. I think I'm going to start with Ultra Ball away, the Fury Belt, and the Lightning Energy you know, drop my ray, accelerate. Uh, that's probably good. I could get rid of the Guzma instead. I mean, it's less items, I guess. Uh, I think, sure, the Fury Belt seems better. We'll put six in the discard pile. Save the Guzma because the Guzma just seems good for like later in the game. So we're going to go get ourselves probably the Ladia seems kind of bad. Actually, everybody seems kind of bad. We, like, don't really want anybody in play. So I'm just going to, like, fail that. Like, we just Ultra Balled that in order to get an energy in the discard pile. And the thing here is that, yeah, we can't really bench people because he's just going to be, like, ramping up damage with that Coco, right? Oh, my gosh. That's a horrible whiff there. I mean, we got an item in the discard pile with that Max Elixir. And for what? Just to like, you know, just to whiff. That's like a horrible feeling. So really, it's just tough. Like we kind of are in the grinder here already. Like I feel like I'm probably going to have to bench that Lele. I didn't get a grass energy for Tempest. Like this deck just puts a lot of pressure on the Rayquaza deck. And yeah, I, it's just, uh, just kind of brutal. I think, you know, you get punished for playing quickly because you just throw your items away and then you got trash lanch to worry about. It's just kind of a nightmare. I think ideally uh, I'm probably going to just Lele for Guzma next turn. So I think I probably just have to do that preemptively here and just get it just to like get my Ray back into the active position. And then I think we're also just like hoping that we hit a grass energy on this ray with my max elixir like i could have like lay laid for something else but i think i need to just go knock out the trash lanch because i suspect that i'm just like kind of going in on my items here i don't really see another out i also kind of feel like i have to ultra ball here just to like just to thin my deck a little bit more uh, and like get something else out of my deck, uh, which feels bad, but we'll do that and get the Latias just in my hand. And, or I could get like a Rangaroo. Let's see, I could get a Rangaroo feels fine. Let's just get, I mean, that's just a lot of damage they're spending. We'll get the Rangaroo and we'll just keep it in our hand for now. And then I think I max elixir, hope it's a grass attach and go from there. So we do have grass, good. And now I have three energies on Array. I can draw more with the Rangaroo to see if I just like kind of draw out of this. Then the Tapu Koko is doing 80 damage a turn, which is like not what we want, but it's, it's fine. I think that's kind of more or less what we have to do. I think I'd rather keep the Tapu Koko at 60 damage a turn, but then uh, this deck also plays Shrine of Punishment, right? So they're gonna throw Shrine in, then they're doing like 90 damage a turn. Uh, not 60, uh, it'll do 60, 
70, 80, 90. Yeah, they're doing 90 damage a turn, right, with Tapu Koko, which is like super annoying. I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items in the discard pile. Here's the shrine. If they got the DCE, oh, they're going to Guzma as well. They're probably just going to trash a Lanch. Yeah, and there's, I, it just knocks me out. Yeah, so like this is just a nightmare. Uh, I know <laughs> that was close. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> What a guy. All right. So this is just, uh, as you can see, the Garvador and the Shrine of Punishment, just like horrible, horrible combo here. I think, like for me to deal with anyway, I think that I can just, uh, yeah, this is, this is just all bad. I think we just have to kind of grind here and see what we can do. Uh, let's just instruct for two, see if we can draw out of this. If not, I can Guzma and Tempest. All right, let's Mysterious Treasure away that Guzma there. Uh, actually, go get my Ray. And let's see, I don't. I have two Max Elixirs left in deck. I think I could get the Latias too. We're going to get the Latias. At this point, like, we're all in on... We're, like, all in on our items. Like, the Rays are just knocking us out. Like, that's just kind of how sad this is. So I think I just have to like retreat into a Ranguru. This is just like, this is really brutal. I mean, we're just gonna get smoked. This is like, this is really, really bad. The Shrine is just gonna like lock us up. You know, you try to play, the Garbodor Coco deck is just like a nightmare for you because you try to play, you know, kind of conservatively uh, and then the Coco just spreads and it's just very annoying. You try to play aggressively, and then the Garbodor just can come out here. And with the Choice Band in the Shrine, it doesn't even matter if it's, like, short on items. Like, they're going to be able to make up that damage. And now, just, like, this thing is just going to knock out, just knock out, knock out, knock out on Rayquaza's. And that's just, uh, that's just it, you know? So, like, that is really brutal. Rayquaza is such a powerful deck. It could get, like, you know, 10, 11 energy in play like turn two but you know look at this oh yeah this is uh <laughs> you have a good deck sir well played this guy is like trolling me really hard right now it's very uh very funny i don't really care though like i know that this coco deck is very good so like that's uh that's kind of a known quantity for me he's got the tapu coco on the bench as well uh, and I know that the Ray deck loses to this really bad. I haven't been able to really, you know, do anything sustainable versus this Ray deck in any of the matchups that I played. Uh, or I have not been able to do anything versus this Coco Garb deck in any of the times that I have played it. So let's see here. We have a Rescue Stretcher. I can go get a Ray, uh, which is kind of necessary. I think we got to do that. And then I can, yeah, we got to do that. So let's go get a Rescue Stretcher. Let's put... Pokemon from my discard pile into my hand. I have to get a Ray. And then we have to just like kind of load it up a little bit. Let's see here. Let's do short. And we don't have our abilities anymore. We're going to max elixir, grab an energy. Good. And then we're going to max elixir again, grab another energy. And we're going to hope that he never attacks again. So like we are just, uh, let's see, I can acro bike. And let's see, I got a Guzma, that's fine. All right, so we're gonna just try to make it so that he doesn't really do anything. I mean, he, like, he can knock out the Latias, then I just have to hope that he just like dead draws for the rest of the game. Like I can knock out the Latias or this Garbodor like next turn. Then he can Coco me. I have to literally hope that he doesn't get another energy. And after I knock out Garbodor, then Tapu Coco. And there's a mysterious treasure there. You know he's going to like go get another Pokemon here. This Rayquaza is taking like 30 damage, uh, <laughs> like every exchange here. And he's got a Cynthia. So like that's definitely not happening. All he has to do is set up another Garbodor, which he definitely has in hand now. He has had to do almost nothing to just totally dismantle this deck here, which has been pretty impressive. Like, I got to give it to him. And I played into it a little bit. I think I kind of had to to try and get moving or else, like, the Tapu Coco was just going to spread. And like I said, it just kind of, like, put me between a rock and a hard place there with that, uh, you know, with that situation. So that's just kind of that's just kind of what this deck does. Very impressive. Very cool. And, you know, shout out to my opponent. Attach that to the wrong place. I was supposed to go on the Ray, but I highly doubt it's going to matter. We are going to take one prize here, which is uh, very cool. And then my opponent, you know, pretty much 6-0'd me there. So that was uh, 
That was insane. Last time I played against this deck, it wasn't that brutal, but I think they got set up very well. You know, my deck kind of unfortunately didn't really have one of those dream setups where you just like do what you need to do without getting items in the discard pile. Sometimes you could do it. Like sometimes you can get, you know, six energy in play, or whatever, without really getting too many items in the discard pile. But we saw even with seven, uh, it doesn't really matter because they had choice band to get them up to 170 and then shrine to get them to 180. Even if I only had like six, right? I'm doing like, they're doing 120. And then they have the, uh, they have the choice band to do up to 150 and then one exchange with the stadium. And that's going to be out as well. So rough stuff there. All right. Garbodor spread. Uh, yeah, not the kind of deck you want to see if you're playing Rayquaza GX. Anyways, let me know. What do you guys think about the Garbodor spread deck in the comments below. It's not the first time I've seen this deck. I've seen this deck on PTCGO a couple times now. If you guys think Garbodor spread could be a thing at the World Championships? Let me know. What do you guys think in the comments below? Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Peace.